Geeks. Welcome to the monthly edition of the Mastermind Startup Fundraising Office Hours here online for the world's consumption to help you get your startup business moving faster, farther, with uh, more capital efficiency, less equity dilution, uh, greater employee happiness, and oh, customer satisfaction. We can't forget that one. I hope you're doing well today. I'm Scott Fox. Thanks for joining me. Going to be here for an hour today taking your questions about startups and how to raise money for them and grow them to be success uh, that can make a difference in the world. So if you've got a question for us here today, um, please go ahead and join us in the chat rooms. Let me put up the chat link. So, so if you're on uh, YouTube or LinkedIn, there are live chats over there. And uh, you can post, uh, you can comment there and we'll show up in a chat room uh, live here on the broadcast and happy to cover your question. If you submitted a question in advance, please check your email inbox and there should be a link there so that you can join me on camera and we'll talk about your questions and concerns. And if you are um, just late to the party or haven't had a chance to check your inbox or during the show here, it figures out you figure out that you have a question or a startup pitch you might want to practice with us, you can join us on camera. Here's a link for that as well. That's a uh, bit.ly masterminds on camera link. <laughs> so try that if you want to join me on camera. It'd be great to see you. Okay, so uh, why are we here today and who am I? Well, we're here today to talk about startup. That's the best uh, progressive, positive force in the universe as far as I can tell. Well, I guess love. It would be second to love if you want to get mushy. But business-wise, we're talking about startup and how to help you get farther faster, like I said. So why am I doing this? Well, I'm a serial internet entrepreneur. I've been online and building businesses for 25 years now. Gosh, dating myself, I guess. I've written these books behind me. Um, the uh, three middle ones are the English versions, and the others are foreign translations. So there are books in many languages all over the world. So if you're here because you read one of my books, thanks. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Uh, and if you're here because of our YouTube channel or LinkedIn or uh, the many other workshops and events that we hold online through the Startup Council, welcome to you as well. I'm here today to take questions, basically. So if you've got some questions for me, please go ahead. Uh, put them in the chat room. Join me on camera. Let me put that uh, link up again. Uh, it's the fun, friendly hour where the idea is to advance your knowledge and expertise based on some of the successes I've had online over the past couple dozen uh, couple dozen years. Uh, I'm these days. I am mostly uh, I'm a serial internet entrepreneur, but I'm also these days mostly an angel investor, a mentor to lots of startup companies uh, here in Southern California and around the world. Uh, both uh, directly as an investor, but also indirectly through my books, the podcasts, the YouTube channel that I've run for a long time. I'm an active angel investor. I'm part of Tech Coast Angels. I'm the chairman of Stanford Angels and Entrepreneurs for Orange County. Uh, I'm uh, a limited partner at a bunch of different funds, et cetera, et cetera. I've been doing this a while. Uh, my particular specialty is software and internet-based businesses, uh, but any entrepreneurship is fair game because honestly, the same sort of principles apply in lots of places, and we'd be happy to hear from you with your questions if I can help you. So let's see. Um, let's put up the chat up here. Looks like some people are chiming in here already. Good. So there's uh, there's Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne. Um, Yvonne wants me to talk on Clubhouse too. Yes, we might do that, but I have a theory about Yvonne. Uh, about Clubhouse, and honestly, I'm not a big fan, Yvonne, so I'll, I'll we'll get back to that later if you want to talk about that. And Ahmed checking in. Excellent. Hi, Ahmed. Nice to meet you. Uh, please add in the chat room, you guys, uh, where, you, uh, where you're where you from. That's always interesting, at least for me, to figure out where we're reaching. Let me put up my LinkedIn uh, link here as well. Oh, by, by the way, invite your friends. <laughs> we're on YouTube now, YouTube slash Scott Fox. Here's my LinkedIn if you'd like to get acquainted. Um, Always happy to hear from founders. Uh, I can't directly get involved or even respond to everybody that reaches out to me, but I will uh, funnel you in the right direction if you need help, say, with attorneys or accountants or startup pitches or um, uh, investment places to practice your pitch, uh, that sort of thing. Oh, by the way, we run these workshops uh, once a month, the Startup Accelerator Workshops. I've been running those since 2017, Sim similar format to this, but they're closed and private, not recorded. And we'd be happy to hear from you there uh, if that's helpful to you. Uh, to join those. Those are a lot of fun. So uh, a couple quick disclaimers. I do have a law degree uh, from Stanford Law School, but this is not legal advice. I'm not giving financial advice either. This is for entertainment. So please don't take any of this too seriously. You should consult your own professional advisors, of course, right? This is uh, big boy stuff or big girl stuff. Uh, we're not messing around. So please do uh, consult your own advisors so that you get this stuff right. So why is the question? Why am I doing this? Well, because I believe in you. I don't even know most of you, but I believe in you. I think entrepreneurs are the best positive force that we have going. Like I said at the top of the hour, um, the world needs help. <laughs> Optimists 
our uh, entrepreneurs are optimists, right? We, we're can-do folks with a positive outlook, and we want to get stuff done and change things for the better. So I invite you to join me today uh, and chime in your questions um, to, uh, in the chat room there. If you join me on camera, those are the people I'll take first. It's always more interesting than just hearing me talk. At least that's what my wife said. So, all right, so let's get going. Um, no sales pitches uh, in this Space. This is a safe space for you, my friends, the entrepreneurs. Uh, some, some of you said that you wanted to practice your investor pitch. We'll also do that if a couple of people want to come on camera uh, and do a minute or two minute tops, a quick pitch, and just get some feedback from me and from the other folks around the world who are checking in. So um, there's the link, Boris. Hi, Boris. Nice to meet you. There's a link in the chat window. Uh, it's on the screen, actually. Um, and um, let's see, Mark is from Miami. John from Richmond. Um, and uh, they're moving good. That's everybody's showing up a little faster than I can keep up with already. Hold on, let me switch windows here. Uh, okay, I'm Ed Jesse from ben West Vancouver. Nice to meet you. And Man Manjunath, also from Canada. Excellent. Um, Sam, yep, there's a Sam. I gave you that link. Sam's from Orange County. Okay, nice to see you. Um, great. Okay, so I want to start the show. Uh, well, that, like I said, if you want to join me on camera, that's the link. Hopefully, you can type that in there. I might be able to add that. Hold on. I don't want to get too fancy here or I'll, I'll blow up the system, but let's see. What if I did this? Maybe that will show up in the chat. Hey, look at that. Amazing, this internet thing. I think there's a real future here. All right. So let's, I wanted to talk real quickly about something else, which was this, um, the Ukraine. So um, this is not a political show by any means, but there's something terrible going on in Ukraine. It is not justified, uh, an unprovoked attack on a peaceful democracy, and uh, it just is really bad news. So I would like to suggest that if you have the means, you find a way to get involved and support those folks. There are lots of people that need help. Um, I looked at a bunch of different things. I'm no charity expert, but I did find this organization that I thought was uh, rather impressive. This is called Media Lifeline Ukraine. Donations here go to support journalists who are covering the situation there. And of course, it's always wonderful to give directly to those in need, no, no doubt, right? That's, that's the point. Um, but journalists actually amplify the signal of the news that needs to get out, and it's being repressed there in Ukraine, uh, what's, what's happening. Uh, so I gave some money uh, yesterday, I ran across this link, and I gave some money to these folks. Uh, they're based in the Netherlands. This is a, a worldwide organization that supports uh, free speech and, and journalistic coverage of events. So I gave some money there, and if you are uh, able to do so, I encourage you to find your own source to contribute to support the people in Ukraine. Or, uh, or try this one. Uh, quick warning, um, like I said, it's in, uh, in the Netherlands. So when I tried to use my American credit card, um, uh, the bank immediately thought it was, uh, uh, you know, that somebody had, was, had gotten my card. <laughs> so I had to do it twice uh, because the charge shows up in euros, not in dollars. So as long as you know that, you should be fine. Okay, so uh, please support the Ukraine and uh, now we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming. So let's go, uh, let's, there we go, that's the one I want. Okay, so, so okay, great, I see some of you joining in the chat room. Hey, uh, Subod and Joe and, uh, and Sam, if you could give me a hint, as Sam did in the, uh, in the private chat that's available to those of you who are on camera, just let me know what you wanna talk about and I'll try to work it into the, uh, into the discussion, okay? So just give me a quick shout out, just not the whole thing, just like what's the topic basically so that I can group them together or uh, other things like that. Okay, let me hit the chat room once more to see if I have anything urgent going on. Apparently, you can hear me. I forgot to check. Everybody can hear me, <laughs> uh, hopefully. And um, okay, da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. okay, I think I've gotten everybody so far. Okay, so um, please do uh, invite your friends. Um, let's see, remind you of being recorded. Uh, uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. That would be great. Um, because I do this, there's no money in this for me. Obviously, I'm doing it to try to help. Oh, here we go. Invite your friends. Uh, let me put this one up. Join our email list. There you go. Okay. Okay. So let's go with our first one, Sam. So let's see. Hold on here. I'm going to try to make this work fancy like. Let's see. Here's some of our friends. Sorry, let me get that window out of the way. Okay. There we go. There's some, some of our friends. Hold on. I got to unmute you guys. That was more than. No, sorry, it was Sam that had the question. Subod and Joe, if you want to join us also, go ahead and put something in the chat room. Okay, so Joe, that's that button. Here's Joe. And Joe, are you unmuted or can you unmute? I'm Sam. Oh, you're Sam. Sorry, I got too Hi. much going on here, obviously. But Sam, you had the question about fundraising, right? Yes, can you hear me? 
I can hear you. Let me turn it up a little though. Make sure everybody can. Go ahead, Sam. Nice to meet you. So you're you're in Southern California. Yeah, I was here on your last mastermind. I got a lot of value from it. So thank you for hosting this. Sure. Um, nice to see. You. So I have a I have a question, and I just want to get your thoughts on it. Obviously. So uh, do you have any advice if you do have the means to create an MVP, and naturally you do think uh, investors, you know, VCs or angels would find it of high value, but it's going to take literally every cent of your cash. What do you th just, what do you think of that? Is, is that a, is that too much risk? I'm sure, I'm sure you've heard this before. So I, like I said, I just yeah. want to get your, your, your thoughts on that. Sure. No, it's a, it's a really good question, Sam. Thank you for sharing. It, Cause I'm sure it's one that a lot of people that are listening have a similar question and I'm smiling because I've been there. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, my first startup uh, 20 plus years ago, I pretty much bankrupted myself. Uh, and that didn't go well. So that's not, I'm not, that's my story, not yours, right? Hopefully your story will work out better, but I know the pain is what I'm saying. Um, so you got to be careful. Okay. So advice. Um, so first of all, for folks who don't know the lingo, MVP is minimum viable product, or as one of my friends says, minimum valuable product, right? You got to actually mm -hmm. have something that offers value to the audience um, and the audience being customers. Um, so how do you get a minimum viable product going? Like how, how all is, is all in the way to go or, or how do you do it? And uh, you know, that's a, that's a really hard one to, to answer. I don't want to be evasive, but if you have suggestions for uh, Joe, everybody um, who is just joining, go ahead and put them in the chat room. But I think my response, Sam, would be I would stage it, right? I would try to think of it in terms of three or four phases, uh, both in terms of the product development, but also in terms of your budget uh, and your life, honestly. You know, there's only so many years in one's life, right? So I would think about it kind of like, um, I don't like onions, but that's the metaphor that comes to mind, you know, kind of layers. And I would think about it like uh, the minimum, minimum <laughs> viable product, and then the sort of medium minimum, and then the actual minimum, that kind of thing, and, and try to scale up your cash and your time uh, commitment based on response from customers. And this is where I'm really going. The response from customers is the key. Far too many of us, including me, I'll tar myself with this brush. This is what I did with my first company. I was so convinced that I had a vision of the future that actually kind of was not that wrong i was just at least 10 years too early which is just as good as being wrong um mm -hmm. i didn't talk to customers enough right who's actually going to buy this so what i would do is try to take a certain amount of money and spend that money to get enough to get feedback with and then take that feedback spend a little more get some more feedback right so um if you had a you know a thousand dollar budget, break it into four two hundred fifty dollar chunks, and if it's a ten thousand dollar budget, spit it into four two hundred five hundred dollar chunks, right? And the the point being that you got to get it out of your head and into customers' hands because you know even Einstein, well he wasn't a marketed guy, right? So <laughs> who knows what he would have come up with? But um, you, without customers' buy in, the rest is is it's it's a waste of time, right? So is that helpful? Are we on the right track there? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I don't. I'd, I'd like to hear what you have to say if I can. Um, what if? What I need. My product would be 140 grand to get to an MVP, and I could do that, but it would be all out. But I, because of what it is, it would be hard to show any type of MVP without without it being fully really completed because it is software based, and so right. that's why I'm kind of. I'm kind of stuck where it's it's very black and white. And I also don't know if 140 grand is such a small amount of money in the big money scheme in the big money scheme that that is just so little that I should just go out and ask for that directly. And that's yeah. also kind of where I'm I, I'm kind of stuck between two islands, if that makes sense. And if you could speak on that, I'd appreciate it. But I understand if you can't. No, no, that's these are these are really good questions that I think we all face. So I'm happy to. Uh, but the rest of you, I see some other questions coming in the private chat. Let me just take a picture. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there are other things to talk about. So. <laughs> okay. So. Um, okay. First of all, 140 grand, a lot of money to you. You're right. Not a lot of money to Tiger Global, right? Or one of the big, you know, private equity firms or, or VCs, right? But it's your money, right? It's not their money. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a it's a crap load of money, right? So. Um, the short answer there is nobody's going to give you 140 grand for an idea. That just doesn't happen anymore, or even 50 grand. So everybody needs to move on from the 90s. There is no one giving money for ideas anymore. It just doesn't happen. Uh, at least professionals won't do it. If you can convince your aunt and uncle to do it or your mom, 
that's between you and your family, right? But it, it's just not going to happen. So you're left with reality, which is you've got credit cards. Maybe you own a car or a house you can mortgage, like crazy stuff, right? And I do not recommend that. But again, this is your life, right? So um, what, what I would do is dial back on your expectations of what minimum means. Um, and, and think about, I understand how software works. I do. Um, and that you really need the whole thing to actually work to show people, but what if you did some mock-ups first, right? Some wireframes or some, some Photoshop designs, right. And sat down with people and did a kind of a little focus group and said, if I had this thing and it worked like this, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how interested are you? Right. And if you are interested, how much would you pay? right? Just on a paper basis, right? I mean, you could do that this afternoon, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, the benefit of that is not only does it save you $139,000, but also saves you like three months of worrying about getting this thing right, right? Or maybe a year, right? So th that's my point. Quicker iteration with more rapid feedback from the customers is what you need. So I would do really minimum, like minimum, minimum, like making shit up. <laughs> it's like <laughs> right? a stick figure drawing almost. Stick figure. Yeah, exactly. No, you're getting it. Yeah. Stick figures and just see if anybody cares. Because until you get some idea that somebody cares, you're, you're, you know, you're blowing smoke, right? So, and if you get, yeah. you know, whatever, if you can get three or five or 10 or 50 people to say, yeah, that, that's kind of interesting. I'd like to hear more. That's what you're after, right? And then what's the next level? Well, it's not stick figures. It's uh, you hire somebody off of Fiverr or Upwork and they do a video of what this should look like, right? And it's not the actual thing. Somebody actually clicking, entering data, pulling down the, the results, you know, making the transaction, whatever it is. It's, it's like this flow. You know, and then again, here's here's another tip. You don't ask for money. You don't even ask for a deal. You just ask for advice, right? So you ask for money, you get advice. You ask for advice, you might get money. <laughs> so yeah, so you yeah, go yeah. and you yeah. ask them, say, you know, so, so here's this thing, right? I know it sucks, but you know, this concept, what what you're the expert in the field. What do you think of this? You know, what can you what can I do to make this better? And then if they're interested, you know, by the way, what would it take to have your company buy that? What kind of budget do you have for this? No pressure, but, you know, I'm just trying to build this out. Help me out as an entrepreneur. And, and it, doing that instead of the, this is the problem that people have is like, we're all raised on like movie premieres, right? Remember when movies would come out, like, you know, opening weekend, the big movie and the movie studio spends like, I don't know, $50 million so that everybody on the planet knows this movie is coming out and the movie comes out and then it may do well, it may not, but then they're done. If it didn't do well, they're done. You don't want to be that right. guy, right? You want right. to have a bunch of bites at the apple and small releases like an onion, like I said, close friends, slightly wider, a little wider with iterative examples with a little more advanced each time um, that you can gradually deploy your resources against. And if you do that, you know, think in terms of three, four, five phases before you spend your, your hundred grand, uh, by the time you get to spending your hundred grand, you know, honestly, I've seen it many times. The name of the company might have changed. The direction might have changed. You know, you don't want to put all go all in until you have lots of customer feedback, even if you had hundred grand sitting around extra, right? That, that iteration is the, how's that helpful? <laughs> very helpful. I appreciate it very much. It's one of my favorite topics. Cause it's a, it's really, it's hard to resist the temptation to, you know, just go, you know, everybody says, go for it, go for it. And hustle is good, but hustle's not, you got to hustle smart. Right. So, right. Anyway. All right. All right. Well, nice to meet you. Thank Sam. you. I hope we'll be getting back to some uh, in-person events uh, around Orange County one of these days. And I hope that we'll, uh, maybe get to meet face to face. That'd be fun. That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Nice to meet you. Okay. So who else we got here? We're going to be, sorry, we're going to, uh, let me check the chat room. Um, what's next? Uh, going to bring a couple people in here. Um, sorry. Just looking for who we got here. Rachel and Manjunath. If you guys want to join us, you need to turn on your cameras and I'll take uh, sorry. Okay. So Joe, um, well, there's Rachel. Okay. Let's try to get a, sense of who's here okay so um sorry too many buttons all right <laughs> okay sorry let me sorry joe is just watching okay okay hold on and we did sam all right guys let me let me i should have checked the chat before i did that okay so Subad, okay you want to practice a pitch we'll do that in a minute but you also had a question and rachel can you give me some more details how to think about ask i don't know what that means can you make a full sentence there or two and Subo, let's talk about your legal team question, and we'll do the pitches a little later if that's okay with you. Can sure. You on mute? Okay, there you are. You're there. Cool. Yep. Hey, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Um, Dallas, Texas. Okay. Hey, nice to meet you. Thanks nice to meet you. you. So, yeah, so my question is, you know, I'm bootstrapping this thing, and we launched the app in the Google Play Store. Uh, end of the month, we'll launch uh, Reap and Wiz in the Apple Play Store. And uh, now that 
I spent all this money on, you know, marketing and development costs. I'm trying to shore up some legal, a legal team or a, an attorney that'll help me with, you know, safe notes and the language around that. There's so many areas that I really don't know, right? Yeah. Um, whether I do a PPM or if it's safe notes and then trademarking and just having a peace of mind that I have an advisor attorney on board, a consigliere, yes. you know, celebrating Godfather's 50 years, you know, maybe a consigliere on my side would, would give me a peace of mind. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question. So um, you answered one, my first question was going to be, are you going to raise money or not? And you already mentioned a safe note. So anybody that doesn't know that a safe note is a simple agreement for future equity. It's a type of, it's a type of venture capital basically. So, so he's already answered the, the key question, which is, are you going to raise money? Cause yeah, absolutely. I, I need it. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> so, okay. And the reason I ask that, and this is for everybody else that's listening is um, there are a lot of attorneys in the world who'll be happy to help you, uh, but they want to know that you're going to be able to pay them. Right. So if he was doing this, um, like he was kind of done and now he wanted legal help and he was just going to try to bootstrap it, it would be harder to get legal help because they don't see any money coming in. Right. So they would be, they would rather wait, of course, until he had sales of whatever, you know, 10,000 a week or something. And then they know they'd get paid because attorneys are expensive, at least the good ones. So the fact that he's raising money means, and here's my answer, um, that there are a lot of firms that will actually talk to you at least um, and defer their fees, not free, right? But they'll defer fees right. until you get funded because that way they know that there may be money coming. So I would be happy to, if you'd like, um, you can go to the uh, uh, ocstartupcouncil.org or just or, or find me on LinkedIn and, and message me. Um, I can introduce you to firms that do this kind of work in the software space, and they will defer fees if they like what you're doing, right? So there's a it's kind of, they're kind of investors too, essentially, right? So you kind of have to pitch them a little, sure. um, but they tend to defer five or ten thousand, sometimes even fifteen thousand of fees um, if they see that yeah, this guy or gal is you know they're ready, they're going to market, they're going to raise some money here, so we can float the balance of costs of our hourly rates, you know, for a few months because we're confident that that's going to be a real company with some income to pay us back. So I can make introductions like that for you or anyone else that's listening. If that's interesting. Yeah, that would be awesome. That's been my biggest struggle. I've reached out to them with a recruiting email and, and certainly that was, you know, three months ago where it was still in development stage, but now we've been, you know, been accepted to two accelerator uh, organizations. And, you know, I am, you know, I, like I said, I have launched uh, middle of February in the Google play store and, and yeah. coming up with, um, and I did all the, the validation and all the stuff. I'm a, I'm a former executive with the H and R block. So, uh -huh. you know, I, I, I bring, um, as a tax repair, as well as a manager, I, I bring all of that data with me in terms of, am I ready? Like, um, I forget the gentleman's name who asked, do I deplete my savings and use my right. credit yeah. cards? And I've done yeah. now, now I'm at that stage where yeah. in order to scale, I need I need capital. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that happens to, to all of us at some point. If you're not an entrepreneur, you know, it's not gambling if you always win, right? You, <laughs> you got to get in there and gamble. Um, so, yeah, happy to help with that. Um, the other thing you said I wanted to mention was, well, the, the milestones, right? That is what makes a difference. So ev every service provider gets all kinds of emails asking for free help, right? Like everybody who has a friend who's a doctor, you know, you see a doctor at a cocktail party, everybody walks over with a problem, right? So um, lawyers are the same way. But if you have milestones that you can share with them, that that's great. And what generally people will want, including me, just to give you a heads up, is a, a nice email that we can forward. You know, it says, you know, hi, uh, I'm Sabod and I'm doing this. And, you know, we have this, this, and this, I'm looking to raise some money. I need some help, you know, and then I, you send that to me and then I can forward it to people for you. And that makes it easier okay. for me. Bang, bang, bang. Right. I'm um, happy to do that. And we'll come back. I uh, hope that's helpful. And um, let's, uh, we'll come back to your pitch in a few minutes as well. All right. Cool. Nice to meet you from Dallas. Nice to meet that you. Thank you. Friend Subode. I hope I'm saying that right. Okay. Let's see here. Um, who's next here? Let me check the chat room here. Um, Okay, Yvonne, I'm a, to, to Boris. Okay, G Luong says hello. Yvonne says, do some research first to find out the most important part for the customer. Yes, Yvonne, that's on Sam's question, right? And find a CTO. Oh, oh find us or talk to a technical person who might suggest something to just start. But I'd first start with a really strong customer. 
research and uh, design from Fiverr. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So if you haven't joined us in the chat room yet, um, this is the uh, Startup Fundraising Office Hours. I'm Scott Fox. And if you're watching on YouTube or LinkedIn, uh, there are chat rooms there and you can uh, join the chat, right? Everybody knows what that means these days. I'd be happy to help you if I can. If you want to post your questions in the chat room, we'll try to get those as well. We're going to talk to our friend... Uh, uh, well, let's see, Rachel, I didn't hear any more from you about how to think about ask. Can you give me some idea what you're talking about there uh, in the little chat room there? How to think about, I'm not sure what you're asking. So I'll try to work it in if we can. And then Manjunath, haven't heard from you. If you want to come on camera, please um, type in the chat room what it is you're going to ask us about um, because I can't keep track of everybody. Okay, so... Okay. Rachel, did you want to? Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Thank you. How to think about company. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. I think you, okay. There's, here's Rachel. Okay. There we go. Did you email did you send your question in advance? Evaluation? Uh, no, no, I didn't. Um, oh. I just sort of signed up. I, I saw uh, you posted on Meetup, and so I decided to join this. Um, so kind of spur of the moment. So no worries. Um, so Where are you from? I, I am in Toronto. Okay, great. Nice to meet you. Uh, cool. Um, so, um, I guess I, I've sort of received conflicting advice when it comes to figuring out um, how much money you should be raising. Uh, some people say, you know, um, uh, VC doesn't matter. Just raise as much as humanly possible as you can because fundraising is hard and you just want to, like, um, uh, like uh, get money. Uh, yeah. essentially to, to grow your business. Um, and then I've also heard other um, forms of advice where, you know, um, if you go for a really high valuation early on, that can make fundraising down the line very difficult. Um, if you, um, like, so sometimes uh, some investors really are value add and can help introduce you. So if they're like particularly well connected in your industry or niche that, um, uh, and, and you also want to make sure that your investors are well incentivized to actually help you. So I guess, um, you, you might be a bit biased on this, <laughs> um, but, uh, what, like, as a, as a founder, like how, how do you think about how much money you should be raising? Um, yeah. and how should you think about dilution? Right. Uh, Okay, so I think all the advice you heard is all true, <laughs> um, it could, because it's situational, right? It depends on how big your company is, how far you are in terms of revenues, what your future funding needs are going to need to be, uh, who the investors are you're talking to, et cetera, et cetera. It's so situational. It's it's really hard to uh, give one answer, right? But here here's what I'd say in terms of raising as a founder, right? The reason I do this is because I think um, it's funny you called out my bias. I'm, I try, and I'm, I, we all have biases, right? Um, but I try, I do this because I try to represent the founder's point of view, right? So I think like a founder, even though I am mostly an investor these days, um, and the founder's point of view is different, and it's so underrepresented. Like so many other pieces of advice are investors telling you what they think you should do so that they get the best deal. <laughs> It's, such, it's so bogus. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's my bias. Anyway, so as, as a founder, I think you want to think of work backwards um, from how much you need, right? Uh, plus some padding. And you need to be realistic about that. And that's where the tension hits, right? Of course, as you can't see the future, nobody can. Um, but whatever that number is, you make it as small as possible, plus some padding. And regardless of what you do, investors are going to try to push down the valuation and dilute you more. I mean, it's just... This is an age old story from the marketplaces of Constantinople 2000 years ago, right? People haggling over a pair of shoes. This is all this is. It's dressed up in fancy words, but it's a deal and they want the best deal and you want to, you know, hold them off, right? So the amount to do, the piece that I think a lot of people miss, and I critique a lot of pitch decks and I see a lot of pitches um, that they often have a slide. They spend, uh, you know, if it's say it's a 20 slide, uh, presentation deck and story about the product and you know the problem you're solving and the team and the market size all good stuff and then at very at very end it says use of funds we're going to take this million dollars that you give us and we're going to there's a pie chart there's always a pie chart right 40 percent on people 40 percent on marketing and 20 percent on product development or something like that and it's like 
No shit. Of course, you're going you're gonna to hire some people. You're going to do some marketing and build a product. You, that is useless slide. What investors want to see, and this is my answer to your question, is what are you going to build? What are the milestones you're going to achieve, right? So your, your raise should be based not on how you're going to spend my money, but what you are going to get to in terms of goals. So that slide should say something like, with your million dollars or 100,000 or even 10,000, whatever it is, it should say, in this amount of time, we are going to increase our customers by X, or we are going to uh, add these three new features by, by March 31st or whatever, you know, or we're going to hire these two people. And that's where they usually stop. We're going to hire a CTO and a head of marketing. Well, no kidding. What are they going to do, right? Well, they're going to increase customers by X so that revenues hit Y. Right. And if you can pick a couple of your key performance indicators, KPIs like that and work backwards, I think that will inform the discussion. It'll be much more useful to investors because they have some idea what you're doing because everybody these, you know, from an investor's point of view, these kind of meetings are like, hey, dad, can I have some money to go to the mall and I'm going to go shopping like, OK, but <laughs> you, know, you know what? What else you got? Right. So is that helpful? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, so. Uh, there's also sort of that like extrapolating um, into the future, like what this amount of money is realistically going to yield. And, and this is uh, something that I struggle with um, Mm -hmm. because, you know, there, there is no definitive answer on what it's going to do, you know, Um, like I I come from a technical background, so it's a lot easier for me to um, estimate technical milestones. Um, But you know, for for marketing, how fast the product is going to take off, you know, like, you can say, oh, I ran this ad, and this many people, you know, signed up or converted, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, up, up. that's exactly what you do. That's all you got. Don't laugh. You're maybe that's (laughs) that's data, right? I mean, data is way better than waving your hands, right? So yeah, it seems skimpy when you're used to, you know, code or, you know, engineering type definitive, you know, deliverables, but, but yeah, that's way better than nothing. And you'd be shocked at how few people do that. People do marketing projections all the time. And the most common one is there's a billion people on earth. If we get 10% of those, we have a hundred million customers. Aren't we smart? Like that's not a, that's nonsense. Right. But if you actually do the, take the time to say, we spent a thousand dollars on Facebook ads and we targeted women uh, with a college degree between 30 and 40 years old who are likely you know, customers of our new such and such product, and we got this kind of yield, That that's way ahead of what I usually see in early stage pitch decks. And it's at least something. And, you know, investors are numbers people. So you, you, you can legitimately laugh at those as marketing data, but at least it's data. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, the, you can always, like, inflate the numbers. And, and I guess, like, uh, especially for the early stages, how valuable is that information actually to you? The uh, the conversion type data, you mean from an ad test? Um, yeah, uh, I guess, like, like, revenue projections. Well, revenue projections are... It's like uh, what Winston Churchill said about democracy. It's the worst form of government in the world, except all the other ones or something like that. Right. I mean, projections are terrible. Everybody knows they're nonsense, but if you don't have projections, you got literally nothing. So at least projections give you something to talk about. Um, I have seen a shift over the years from projections. Five-year projections used to be the standard. Now they're more like three-year projections because people know four and five years out. I mean, God only knows, right? So there's a recognition that projections are made up. But uh, at least they give you something to talk about. And everybody should should remember that this early stage discussions with early stage investors aren't really about getting a check. They're about getting the second date, right? So you want to have enough to discuss so that you can go on the second date and the third date and really get acquainted and then review those projections, right? So the projections might be silly, but you're a reasonably smart person and you're not going to say something stupid, uh, ideally, <laughs> you know, you're not going to say we're going to grow a thousand percent a week, you know, with no marketing, like that would be stupid. Right. So, but you can say, you just take the variables you can control and spell them out. You know, we're attacking this market, which is this size. Uh, we think there's this many people we can reach. Uh, they tend to have a budget about like this, uh, you know, and you have a bunch of kind of, you know, Goldilocks type variables, not too big, not too small, just right. 
then you put a bunch of those together and you come out with number at the end and it's kind of like making sausage. It's a mess, but at least, you know, you know, is it 10 million or is it a hundred million or is it a billion? And that's all investors are really looking for. So again, if you're from an engineering sort of background, it's not precise, but at least it's enough for an investor to say, okay, you're the, you know this way better than I do. You're the expert, right? You are the founder. You've seen this need. You've spent the time, blood, sweat, and tears to come to me with these projections. You think this is legit. And yeah, I know you're probably exaggerating a little. Okay. But at least you can tell me, you know, is this a minor league or a major league opportunity? And is it in, you know, aerospace or is it in renewable energy or is it in software or is it in pharmaceuticals, right? You got to just give me those goalposts. And that's all this is. The first couple of meetings are just kind of, it's kind of like a real date, right? Like, huh, he's cute, but he's too tall. Or, you know, whatever, you know, you kind of just get in these guideposts, right? And um, that's what, that's all projections are. Is that helpful? I, I think so. Okay. Well, try, try to, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to have them. That's the other thing. People sometimes go to the other extreme and they want to present just on potential and that, that won't go anywhere. So you do need projections. And there are plenty of templates online about, um, uh, you know, formats for how to present projections. Um I see in the chat room there, Kim has said, is this the same as a three-year profit and loss statement? Uh, and Joe, good answer. No, they're not. A lot of different, uh, a lot of the same info, but focus on different data points. Um, what kind of data does three-year projections focus on besides the one found on a P&L? A P&L is more about actual results, things that have happened, um, or, or I guess projected P&L. But pro uh, projections will have more about... Um, the number of customers, if they're done right, they'll have number of customers, conversion rates. Um, there's a, a lot of buzzwords in here. Um, a lot of, well, I don't know if you guys want to talk about that. I get distracted here. Let me, let's finish up with Rachel. We can talk about LTV and CAC and stuff like that if you want, but um, do you know what those mean, Rachel? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Well, let me just say it for the audience and long-term value or lifetime value, sorry, of customers, customer acquisition costs. These are the kind of numbers that go into projections that investors want to see. Okay. I did a lot of talking there. Was that helpful? Anybody else? Any yeah. thoughts? Um, I guess, how as a founder do you sort of deal with the perverse incentive when you're meeting with um, investors to sort of do really grandiose um, uh, like financial projections? Because uh, do, they, do they, you think that there isn't an incentive for founders to do that? No, there certainly is, but it, real investors won't believe them and you lose credibility. Uh, okay. the, the, the it again this is situational it depends a lot on who you're talking to right you can probably convince your your rich uncle of anything because he loves you right <laughs> right so that's very different than talking to somebody who's been doing this for 20 years and doesn't you know sees 50 plans a week right mm -hmm. so um and people that know the the domain um meaning the, the industry that you're talking about uh, they're going to be a lot more skeptical uh, and you'll even see people with uh, roughly equivalent uh, experience have very different takes. I was on a call last week with an early stage company that was pitching. And uh, one guy on the call knew the industry and thought this company was great and wanted to invest. The other guy was a CFO and didn't believe the projections and was very skeptical uh, mm -hmm. and didn't want to invest. And they're both very talented, bright people. But it's like politics. People just dis disagree, right? Because it's compounded mm -hmm. assumptions. That's that's what startups are. Um, and uh, you just got to keep the trick for everybody is keep going until you find enough people that that uh, that buy your story. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that wasn't more precise, but that's how it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, nice to meet you, Rachel. I hope we'll see Likewise. you again. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, Kim, did you have a did you want to come on camera there and talk about that? Or is that a uh, let me know in the chat room? Uh, the private chat there. If anybody else wants to join us on camera, let me put that link up again. Sorry, Rachel, we'll take you off there. There you go. Nice to meet her from Toronto. So let me do a couple more quickies here. Um, yes, comment on LinkedIn or YouTube if you want to join us in the chat room. I will look there in a moment to see what other questions we have. Uh, like I said, I'm Scott Fox from the Startup Council. It's nice to meet you all. We do this once a month, the fourth Tuesday of the month. Uh, this is my lunchtime, so I'm taking my lunch hour to talk to you and I hope it's helpful. Please tell your friends, like and subscribe. That's the only way this works and we help more people. Uh, if you see me or uh, online or um, any of the startup council activities, if you can like and share them, those little clicks do add up. We all know it's a, well, it's an algorithmic world and we're just living in it. Um, 
And let me post that on camera link in case anybody else wants to join us. Okay, let's review what's going on in the chat room here. So, uh, okay, so has nobody posted in the chat since Yvonne said that a while ago? That's unusual. Okay, put some more stuff in the chat room, guys. Uh, if you have questions or if you um, want to comment and help the people that are on camera, that's a really cool way to do things as well. Um, or maybe the chat's not working. That's kind of unusual that the chat would stop like that. I was going to blow that up for a second to see. Maybe that will... Okay, so I guess it's you guys. Go ahead. <laughs> Somebody watching. Uh, I don't know if we're having trouble or not, but go ahead and post in the chat if you'd like to uh, participate. Okay, let's see. So, um, I'm Kim, Joe. Okay, looks like Joe and Kim. Did you guys solve that? I guess you did. Okay. Um, let's go back to, well, let's try a pitch. Um, Sabo, do you want to kind of do that pitch? And then, Sam, we can go to your question as well. Let me see if um, Sabo, are you up for that pitch there? I sure am. Okay, okay. Hang on, Sam. We'll come back to you then. Talk about Wyoming LLCs. Okay. Let me. Sorry. Let me get. Okay. So the idea is we're just going to do a quick verbal pitch. This is a quick one, a uh, minute or two. And um, everybody that's listening, you can give feedback in the chat room to him. That would be great. Um, and uh, I'll be as helpful as I can. And um, that's kind of it. So. You want to? You want me to time you, Sabot, or you know you're gonna keep this fairly tight? It should be fairly tight. It should be about sixty seconds. Okay, that's great. Okay, cool. All right, so here's Sabot. Um, what's the name of the company? Refund Wiz. Refund Wiz. Okay, here comes Sabot with Refund Wiz. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Sabot Carmarker. My company, Refund Wiz, has developed an app to help Hispanic eighteen to thirty year olds file taxes. It's as easy as uno, dos, tres. Create an account take a couple of pictures of tax documents, and hit submit. As a former manager of H&R Block, I had the opportunity to travel between Dallas-Fort Worth, San Antonio, and Austin, and I can't tell you how many times a Spanish-speaking caller was hung up on by the receptionist saying, no habla espanol. If the receptionist did speak Spanish, he or she would tell them that they would have to drive 50, 60, 70 miles to find a Spanish-speaking tax preparer. With Refund Wiz, you don't need to make appointments. You don't need to learn other software like TurboTax and try to figure out what goes on line seven on form 1040. What is a Schedule C? You don't need to Google what is adjusted gross income. It's as easy as uno, dos, tres with Refund Wiz. Very nice. All right, so everybody who's watching, let's get that chat room going, give him some feedback. Um, that was That was very good, I thought. Um, the, so my comments, I'll, I'll jump right in. If anybody else has comments too, if somebody put something in the chat room. I just want to make sure it's working. <laughs> Not so bad. He's talking, but, um, I Don't think let me meet myself. Uh, okay. So I thought that was great. Um, you started out with a problem, a solution and a personal touch, which is fabulous, right? Because thank you, Don. Okay. Don. Okay. The, the chat room is working. Thank you, Don Parker, wherever you are from. Um, Yes, I agree. Excellent presentation. Very nicely done. So um, investors want to know that there's a problem. They want to know that it's a big problem, right? And that it's worth solving as a market. So um, what Sabot did there, I thought was very nice. He's personal. He, he has a clear speaking voice um, and was clear about what he's doing, the problem he's solving, who the market is, which is very nice. Uh, you don't want to do one of those pitches like I mentioned a couple minutes ago, you know, our, our market is everybody, you know, everybody drinks water and we're making water like that's you got to pick a market, right? So be good at it. Um, identified a market, identified a problem. There's a clear financial incentive for people to get involved and to use the product because it's taxes. So that's kind of implicit, which was nice. Um, the focus on the uh, the Hispanic market was reinforced not only because there's a clear need, the examples he used of of actually calling getting hung up on, man, that would be really disappointing, right? As a, as a person trying to file their taxes, the taxes are annoying enough. Um, his personal experience in the market was nice. You're, you're from that area. So uh, you had the Spanish accent on the uno, dos, tres, you know, so it sounds like maybe you're bilingual, which also gives credibility, uh, all good stuff. Um, so very good. I think as an elevator pitch, maybe very good. Maybe 
perfect. I don't want to say perfect, but very good, right? If you're like in an elevator, literally next to somebody and they say, what are you doing? And you want to hit them. That was great. If you're going to do a longer pitch, given another minute or two uh, the, for everybody listening, I would give the advice that you want to talk a little more about the business opportunity, not just the problem, but what's the business opportunity and add some things like we think there are 14 million people in this market. Uh, three and a half million of them live in Texas and could be easily reached by our marketing. Uh, the average customer value we expect might be whatever, $217 a year. Uh, recurring value might be X, uh, that kind of thing. We can acquire those customers for $50 each, that kind of thing, you know, so that you, the investors want to build um, a mental model of your business as they're listening, right? To figure out whether this is big enough for them. Um, they'd like to know a couple proof points. So I was, um, I'm not sure you mentioned now, this time you did earlier that you got into the app store and stuff. You want to hit those milestones. So this is not just an idea of me, me and my bedroom had, but there's actually people out here using it. Um, some numbers about how, you know, adoption and, and, and that kind of thing would be great. And then most, uh, especially if it's a real pitch, you want to have an ask, right? And usually this ask is, uh, I'm looking for whatever, $250,000, a pre-money valuation of $5 million. Uh, the structure is a safe note or a convertible note or whatever it is. Um, and uh, ideally, you'd say, you know, this round is being led by whatever Tech Coast Angels. And, um, you know, we'd love to have you involved or something like this. Because the, the other things the investors want, they want to know uh, what's the business opportunity, like the size and the sector. And then they want to know what the deal is, right? Because the same exact deal um, might sound wonderful, but if you say, you know, we're raising 50 million at a $5 billion valuation, well, that, that, that's a, that's not what any angel investor is certainly going to do, right? It's a different deal. Even though the company's the same, right? The size of the deal, the size and shape of the deal matter to those of us who are investors because we can or cannot afford it. It's a price question, right? Uh, just like you go shopping for a car, you may want a Hyundai or a Rolls Royce. Like yeah, I, I need to know which, you know, which, uh, uh, car dealing, car dealer lot I'm walking on to. Um, so, but really good, Sabote. So, and all of those are obviously, if you had more time, you could do those things. And you probably, given how well you did that, you probably know those things, but that's for everybody else. <laughs> no, that's, uh, this is very valuable. So um, I'm putting together different increments of pitches. So since you kind of led with 60 seconds, I kept it to 60 mm -hmm. seconds. So yeah, great. in my three minute pitch, I, I will definitely make sure that those things are added in there. Cool. Well, great. Uh, nice, nicely done. Uh, and, and that the real, is the number, number one thing that people do is as entrepreneurs, we get obsessed with the product and we don't talk enough about the business. And investors, honestly, they don't care about the product. They want to know how they're going to make money. Right. And it's not just because they're greedy. It's, it's literally their job. Right. And a lot of you know venture capital firms, they're fiduciaries of other people's money. So as much as you want to talk about, you know, if you've got 10 slides, most entrepreneurs will make like six or seven of them about the product and one or two about the deal. And it's got to be the other way around for investors to really grasp what you're talking about. So cool. Um, well, that was nice. And he did a good job. So if anybody else wants to try that, it looked like Damon uh, wanted to try that as well. Let's see who else we got here. Um, nice to meet you, Sabota. I hope we'll see you again as well. Uh, what time we got here? Okay. We're moving our way through. And thank you to those of you who are uh, <laughs> added in the chat room. Yvonne says, would it be okay over to go over CAC and LTV? Yes, indeed. Uh, Kirk says, how much are you looking for? Yep, I added that one. That was a good point, Kirk. Nice to see you again. Uh, let me just check the other chat room here, too. Uh, <laughs> Kim says, the uno, dos, tres is catchy. Yeah, that's that was good. Uh, it's always good to be catchy, right? Um, let's see. Uh, Sam and Damon both have questions, uh, legal questions there. Okay, maybe we'll get to that in a moment. Um, Kim, you would to what? You said something. Oh, you'd like to pitch. Okay. Oh, so we have two pitches. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Let's do that in a second. Question for regarding the pitch is mentioning the market demographic. Oh, okay. This is a quick one. Sam says uh, regarding the pitch, mentioning a market or demographic, Hispanic 18 to 30. Is that something investors will weed you out for not having? It depends a lot on the product, Sam. The more specific you can be, though, the better. Um, you don't want to be too specific, like, you know, we only whatever, some really narrow target, right? Um, because then the market's too small. You need to find a mix that says we have thought about that. We've researched it. We know people in this market have a budget for this and want to buy this. And it's a pretty big market um, so that investors will believe you, right? Um, it can't be too, it's Goldilocks again. Can't be too big, can't be too uh, large and vague, right? You got to find that in between. The trick is, or the tip, I guess, not 
a trick is that when you um, are a growing company, you can have phases and it's okay to say, we're starting with 18 to 30 year old Hispanics and you can get even smaller, say Hispanic males who live in uh, the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, right? And, and we know that there are whatever, you know, 867,000 of those. That's our, our alpha or beta test market. That's okay because as long as you then say, we're using that to prove our model, this is kind of what I was saying to you earlier, Sam, you know, we're proving our model in this limited market because if we figure that out, we know that there are other, obviously there are female Hispanics in this market. There are also older and younger Hispanics in this market. There are also people who are not Hispanic in this market. And then there's all these other cities that if we, you know, even if we limit it to 18 to 30 year old males, we can also do that in San Antonio and Los Angeles and, and down in Mexico and over in Miami and you know, whatever, right? So you can go both deeper or wider or both. Uh, the trick is you don't want to start by saying, as I've said twice already during this, this hour, you know, we're targeting everybody who drinks water because that you obviously haven't done any research or given any thought to it. You need to be like semi-specific. This is again, kind of what I was talking about with Rachel with the projections. Can't be too big, can't too be too, too small. You just have to show that you've thought about it. You have a, a reason for claiming what you're claiming and then you're going to project that it will grow in some credible way. So that again, you can get to the second and third date and especially early stage investors will wanna help you, right? That's the big thing to remember here. People like me, um, we do this because we wanna help, right? Uh, I had a f had a pretty successful career, uh, you know, in helping in building companies. Uh, and I've written these books. I give the money from these books to charity, by the way, uh, back in inner city Detroit, where I grew up. Um, you know, we're trying to help. So if you come with a reasonable plan, reasonable projections, reasonable target markets and have or demonstrate, you know, goodwill and an effort to really make something happen and the investor can see that you're trying and they agree that this is a thing that's worth happening. Um, they'll try to help you, right? A lot of folks do this because they have expertise in finance or, or code or marketing, whatever it is you need. Um, and, and you can pair up with them. And that's really the objective uh, for a lot of people who give back by being um, investors. Investors get kind of a bad rap, um, but a lot of folks do this really as a hobby. You know, they don't play golf, so they do angel investing. <laughs> so, okay. Now then, um, uh, sorry, I'm reviewing our chats here. So we've got, um, okay, Joe, you have a co-living startup called Seedlings doing a 2 million round for, excellent. Um, no, you don't need to do a, a pitch, send a pitch deck, Joe. We can do it right now. I think we've got several questions. Let's do some pitches then, okay? Let's do, um, so uh, Kim, you wanted to go? Uh, hold on, let's see. Okay, so Kim wants to go and Damon wants to go. And who's that other one? Joe, did you want to go? All right, so there's several. Um, who wants to go first, if I'm right, if, uh, assuming all of you do. And did I miss anybody that's on camera back there? What about you, Mark? Did you want to pitch as well? I think Damon should pitch first because he asked uh, before me. Okay. I just want to make sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Who is yeah, that? Talking probably about? the last one, I guess, who got in there. But. <laughs> oh. Okay. Let's, let's see what we can do here. So let me just turn off the chat for a second. Um, Sorry, a lot of buttons here. I need to hire a producer, I guess. Okay, so Damon was going to be first, it sounded like, and we will be back in a moment for our other friends. Let's see How about that one. Okay, so here comes Damon. And Damon, you got just a minute or two, right? Let's keep this quick, not the whole life story. Uh, and we'll give you some feedback if we can. It's very quick. So most American businesses have trouble with leads. It's in their top five challenges. Getting good leads. Sorry, I, I got to stop you. I couldn't, they have trouble with what? Oh, I, let me speak closer to the mic. Is that better? I think so, but I just missed that one word. It just kind of. Uh, leads. Leads. Okay. Well, all right. So jargon alert. Uh, that you're, you're deep into jargon already, leads, and that could mean anything. So I presume you're going to clear that up. Go ahead. Sorry to uh, interrupt. Business, business uh, opportunities. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, we live in a world where data is ubiquitous everywhere. We know pretty much everything about everything. And people that supply the data to the credit bureaus are the people that I've started working with. 
And so what my proposal is, there's a better way to go about getting your business opportunities. And that is by a push model versus a pull model. Push model, we send to you every month. You decide how many, could be a hundred, could be a thousand. That's how the pricing works. That's not the magic. The magic is when you close a lead, that data comes back to us. And we have a data science model that is being trained by what you do so that your the next month when you get your next set of leads they're better and it keeps getting better and better and better it takes about it takes about 50 to be honest you can't do it off just one you know you have to have a mathematically uh sufficient number to make this work but no one has done this and think of how much time people waste going to the cocktail party, going to the networking event, glad handing business cards, you know, all of that, especially with COVID. Uh, we have the data. We know I have over a hundred attributes on every person in the United States. I've never looked up anyone of my friends. It just would not be ethical. So <clears throat> we start with the customer. OK, we're at about two minutes there, Damon. I think we're getting ready. Yeah, I, I think that, that covers it. OK, OK. All right, so uh, friends online, let's. if you have feedback for Damon, please uh, chime in in the chat room. Hopefully that will get there, uh, show up in a second. Okay, so a very interesting idea. Um, lead generation is a is a thing. I, I think I had a problem understanding you, not because I don't know what leads is, it's just the the word leads is so short. It just, it, it's just in the microphone didn't quite come up. So I'd recommend getting a better microphone um, or a headset or something, you know, so that people, if you're gonna do it online anyway, so that every word can be heard. And maybe you need to say lead generation so that I can hear a phrase, because just the word leads, I just, it dropped and the, you, you get it anyway, I don't need to repeat myself. Um, okay, so um, very interesting idea. I, I could use like a clarifying, this is kind of advice for everybody, but this is a good example, like a clarifying statement at the front, like um, what you do, like um, we are a software company in the business of improving lead generation for our first uh, target industry is whatever it is, medical professionals or real estate or whatever, right? So I'm saying some, just so that I have some idea where we're going, right? Uh, and that takes practice, obviously, right? So um, we're a software company to this, to this, to this. And then um, I like the concept. The, it sounded like there was some iterative learning and there may be some artificial intelligence or something that's actually refining the reactions. Um, that's pretty cool stuff. Um, so would have liked to hear more about the technology. Um, note to everybody, if there is technology like that, uh, you always want to mention whether you have patents or things like that or point out that it's a, um, uh, it's, uh, a defensible moat. They call it a moat, like something that protects competitors from uh, attacking what you're doing, right? Um, and then obviously, as Sam just pointed out, thank you, Sam. Um, we didn't hear what you might want from investors. Uh, and that's, again, this is a short pitch, but um, you probably want to practice um, a little more of the uh, clear statement up front, problem solution, and then what you want, right? Those are the, the bare elements. And if you have more time, you add in like who the team is and why you're doing this, maybe a personal story um, uh, like Sabo did earlier, uh, all those pieces. Um, and uh, together, it sounds like you've got something pretty interesting there. Um, and then I took a couple notes. Oh, the other thing at the beginning, you said this, my proposal is that makes it sound too vague. This is a business. I mean, even if it isn't a business yet, talk about it. Like it's a business and people will take you more seriously. Like we do this, 
right? And yes, it's early stage and we don't actually have any customers yet, but this is a business and we're doing this, we're moving, right? Um, because the uh, something my dad taught me a long time ago, people take their cues from you. So if you sound tentative, they're gonna be tentative, right? So if you say, we're doing this and we're kicking ass and we want $2 million on a 20 million pre-money valuation because we have revenues like this, at least for the moment, they're going to believe you, right? They don't have any choice. Uh, and at least that might get you to the second meeting. I mean, don't exaggerate like that because obviously it sounds like you don't have any revenues yet, <laughs> but you get the idea that that confidence. Um, uh, the only difference between being an entrepreneur and a business owner is in here, right? I, I may be doing this or I am doing it. I am doing this. You are doing this. That's that's That will make a big difference. All right. So, okay. Anybody else have any comments? I didn't see any new, new uh, I hope that's helpful, Damon. Nice to meet you. Um, I think you joined the OC Startup Council recently. Thank you for supporting the work we're doing here in Southern California. Um, it's at one o'clock already. So we're going to keep going here. We had a couple. Um, uh, who was going to be next? I think it was Kim. I, I missed the order, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Here comes, here comes Kim. And, uh, Go ahead and let's hear a couple minutes from you, Cam, about what you want to do, and we'll try to be helpful to you as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Nice to meet you. Okay. So I'm going to read uh, my mission statement. Our mission at iCommit LLC is to research, develop, and test computer hardware, which is capable of usage in extremely high or low temperatures, deep underwater submersion, and chemically toxic environments, ultimately receiving mil specs to, uh, certification for military and government applications. Every product we make for data storage or otherwise, such as crypto wallets, must withstand rigorous testing as durability and strength are central philosophies, which must be integrated in every device we make. As our goal is to help people secure and safeguard their digital data, whatever it may be and wherever it may go. Um, I also have my website or the company website if you want to check it out. And what it is, is just a landing page for this device, which is a computer hardware device, which is fully patented and fully waterproof. And this is just a 3D printed prototype, but an MVP is available and it works. And I'm just really looking for investors to help me, you know, get this uh, commercialized in, you know, the uh, computer hardware industry, essentially. And that's my pitch. Excellent. All right. Well, nice to meet you. And that, that's very interesting. Uh, hardware stuff is that's hard. You're yeah, it's hard to be software. So I might be like in the wrong place here, but it's... no, no, it's fine. And it's this this uh, the principles of entrepreneurship and pitching are the same. I'm just impressed because hardware takes a lot more capital, a lot more time. The software is easy compared to that. So good job. Um, so I guess uh, so that was interesting. So notice that everybody who's watching, um, a bunch of you still watching here, um, he started with a clear explanation. As just as I was suggesting Damon do, right? We do this. And that was really helpful because then I had an idea where we we're going and, and I know, you know, what to listen for. Like, oh, this is a hardware business. So I want to hear more about these kind of things than stuff I would be listening for if it was a consumer products business, for example. So that, that was good. Um, of course, you're never going to get the luxury of reading again, right? So that's only in a practice situation. So what I recommend for folks to do is to uh, figure out what your, and this depends on how much time you have, obviously, right? But figure out what your three, five, or 10 bullet points are, and you just got to memorize them. And that way you can pull them up when you do bump into that rich person in the elevator that you wanted to talk to quickly. Uh, and you can kind of riff on it more naturally uh, because reading is not going to be acceptable in any sort of competitive situation or certainly in any at any party. You can't pull out a, an index card right and start reading. Right. So it just takes a little practice. Um, but figure out like what your, you know, really short version is your medium and your long version, because um, you had a lot of a lot of good points there. Um, the uh, it wasn't completely clear to me what you're doing in terms of the actual who the customer is, um, the specific customer. Like I got that was mil spec and it's durable and it's very cool. It sounds like a cool piece of hardware, but it'd be great to hear our initial customers are these kinds of folks, right? Um, and that will help again investors understand they're like, oh, I know people in that industry. I could help this company or geez, I, you know, I don't know anything or I hate that industry, whatever reason, you know? Um, so more specifics would be helpful. And then at the end, you're raising money. But again, specifics are great. And it sounds like you're early stage. So this doesn't really apply. But for the future, how much at what valuation uh, would be great to know. 
And of course, everybody, if you ever have, if you have revenues, please tell us what the revenues are. Cause then that, that, you know, having even a dollar of revenue is way ahead of having zero because that implies that somebody paid money uh, that they agree with your vision. And that's really what, you know, as in early stage investors, we're, we're really like team builders, quarterbacks. We're trying to get, well, you're the quarterback, but we're trying to get, we're the coach, uh, whatever the metaphor is. We're trying to get behind you and help you build the team that can then run. Right. So if, if the more we get the impression um, like I was saying, Sabod was talking about earlier, you know, you're in the Google app store. We, we have the former CTO from Amazon joined us or, you know, our investor is this big shot. You know, the more of those proof points that we hear, uh, the better. Of course, you can't put all that in 60 seconds. So that's just uh, context for you. So cool. Well, where are you located, Kim? I don't think I'm located in uh, Poway, which is close to San Diego. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. Right. Down to San Diego. Cool. All right. Well, nice to meet you. I hope we'll see you again. I hope that was helpful. Um, I don't know if anybody chimed in in the chat room here. Uh, since I last checked, um, let's see. Okay, Boris says I don't. I don't think these are turned on. Yeah, they don't show up when I turn it off. I see. So there have been some more. Well, the, Boris says I would show the device first and then say what it is. I think Boris. I think that's a good tip, especially these days because so many investments are software and there's nothing to show when you actually have a device. I've seen this at Tech Coast Angels screenings. We have meetings once a month where there's 30 or 50, well, at least we did before the pandemic, with 30 or 50 of us together in a room. And when somebody walks in with a physical item, people just, I don't know, it gets their attention, right? So that's, that's a, I think that's a good suggestion. The best of those, of course, is if you have a consumer product, uh, like Genius Juice is a coconut smoothie that we invested in. And uh, he brought samples, right? So everybody could try the smoothie. And another time a vodka company came and uh, some of the, no, it was the middle of the day, so not everybody drank it, but <laughs> that got everybody's attention, right? So anything physical that breaks it up from just talking is a good suggestion for us. I think that's a smart one. So Great to meet you. can I ask like a question? Like, is it just one more question? Sure. Is it like a smart idea for me to maybe like hand these out, maybe at like trade shows or conventions and things like that? Because if you, if you say that, you know, people are maybe more interested in the device, you know, something physical and real, Rather than like you know the pitch of it, then would I just need to hand maybe these out? Maybe that's the better way to get investors' attention. I don't think it could hurt. It would have to be, you'd have to know what it was and why you were giving it to me, right? I would have security concerns immediately. Like, is this something I'm going to plug in? I don't know who you are. You know, is is it a Trojan? You know, or, or you know, what is it? Uh, and it, and from your point of view, you'd want to make sure you had your logo on it and your contact information, so that if if it was they thought it was magical. They could find you again, you know, in the chaos of a trade show, they could find you again and, and uh, maybe talk to you about investing. So, so I guess it would be a, a guarded maybe, but mm -hmm. I do think you're onto something in terms of that being differentiating. Yes. Um, but that's why you see people all the time handing out, I'm looking for some chachis. I guess we haven't been to too many conferences lately, you know, because of the pandemic, but usually I have something around on my desk that says, you know, um, little trinkets that people hand out at shows, you know, pens or whatever. Um, so maybe, but you want to, you'd want to be careful about what it is and, and be clear uh, what the person was getting, right? So they knew how to react. So cool. Well, nice meeting you, Kim. Hope to see you again. Um, and we're going to, let's see. So who's left here? We're over time here. I guess we had a lot of questions here. So Damon uh, and Kim both um, pitched already. Was there another one? Sam, Mark had to go. Uh, Joe, did you still want to pitch? Let's see, Joe and who's left? Sabod, Joe. How about you, Joe? Did you want to pitch? I've lost yeah, track. Yeah. Okay. Got a minute or two. Yeah, let's do let's do one more and uh, let's let's what have you got to to share uh, with us? My name is Joe DeRosa. Um, I am working on a startup called Seedlings. It's a co living company here in Southern California, uh, based in the LA area. Um, I've had a real estate license for nearly 20 years and I've worked in the mortgage industry and currently honed an MLO endorsement to do mortgages uh, in California and in both. I have real estate license and mortgage license in both uh, Pennsylvania and California. And I've worked on a number of other startups. I'm sure some people have seen me before. Anyway, um, what's the one thing everybody needs in Southern California? Affordable housing. Um, what's the difference between... Um, commercial real estate and residential real estate. Uh, commercial real estate is valued based on the amount of money and profits it brings in. Um, commercial real estate, I mean, residential real estate is based basically on what your um, one to two income family can afford. 
um, in that area. That's generally how I mean, residential real estate is priced out. Um, and what we aim to do is take single family homes here in the Southern California area at first in the LA area and um, do co-living, uh, basically split them up into roommate situations, supervised roommate situations. Um, since I am licensed here, there's a couple financial tricks which we can use uh, that other people aren't using. Um, we're taking an ownership model, but we are using the single family homes and trying to extract the value between what the rental revenue that could be made off a, you know, potentially uh, eight incomes as opposed to a two person income, um, like a $2 million home up in the valley that could potentially house seven or eight tenants at, you know, a thousand to fifteen hundred per month, as opposed to, uh, you know, a, a doctor who may have a wife who may or may not be bringing it. Um, we think there's a lot of value there. Um, and the, the young adult college market for co-living is just exploding. Um, people really love the idea of having a corporate person instead of, you know, to sort of supervise as opposed to um, having, you know, a landlord who may not know real estate laws, who tells you you can't have people over and they don't treat you like, you know, tenants or adults or violate your rights, um, you know. So that's one reason the co-living market is really taking off. And, you know, we seem to extract more from the lifetime value because um, I can operate uh, uh, for the company as a real estate agent and mortgage agent to gain significant financial advantages, but we'll eventually offer those services uh, to our tenants who are leaving um, and offer to uh, incentivize them to use us as a real estate agent or a mortgage agent when they go leave co-living to go buy their first home. So it brings our lifetime value and circular customer base from colleges into young adults into individual homeowners. And we follow them through that whole thing. That's the short, you know what I mean? I don't want to take too long yeah. here. Okay. Well, very interesting. Uh, I like the concept of uh, essentially turning private residential real estate into commercial real estate cash flows. That's that's what right. you're talking about, right? Interesting. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, while your mortgage payment for somebody in the Valley on a $2 million home was probably around $4,500 right now. I mean, probably like a 1.5, sorry, or 1.3. I, you know, when I did the math, uh, I, I wasn't using 2 million at the time. I think it was using 1.3, but you're talking about around 4,500, but we think we can extract upwards of $8,000 out of the same home. Hmm. Um, which, you know, at its value, you know, it, it, it's bringing, there's a huge difference there. And yeah. that's because most residents okay. real estate yeah. is based on the single, you know, one to Got two. In okay. So you're, you're, so very interesting concept. You're doing what I was talking about earlier though. You're pitching the product, right. And you're giving a lot more detail than an investor needs without okay. telling me enough about what an investor gets. So, oh, okay. Very, uh, no, no, stop, stop. We're out of time. Sorry. And this isn't the time to do that. So a 60 second pitch has got to be the business of it. Right. So I get the concept It's interesting. So like some of the other guys, just, just practice that a little bit. It, it sounds like you have something interesting, but okay. you want to nail it down. I think uh Sabota at the top of the show gives a nice example, right? Something personal, why you do this, what the problem is, and then this idea of changing the cash flows is that that's a thing for sure. You have the team background, which is interesting. I'm sorry, not team. Your personal background makes you more qualified than most. Um, just you know, kind of weave that into five or six bullet points that you can nail with you know at uh, five to ten seconds each, and and you'll have a thing. And the thing you didn't do at all because we ran out of time is what do you want from an investor, right? We're raising 2 million at 20 million pre or whatever it is, right? Like that's what investors need to hear or they don't have any idea how to respond. Otherwise it's just a cocktail right. party conversation, which is fine. You know, conversation is fine. But if you're trying to pitch, don't forget to pitch, <laughs> I guess is the idea. And to right. pitch the deal, not the, uh, not the, uh, oh, you two, 2 million at 20 post. Okay, fine. Um, but, uh, but those specifics are what matter, right? So don't, you got to be careful you're you're a nice guy you like but you like to talk right so you got to cut you got to resist that temptation and get to the point and get to the deal because that's what investors need to hear so okay. very cool though um and i the, the background there is is interesting uh yeah this that's a thing sounds like a thing nice to meet you hope we'll see nice you again you. hope that was helpful um and i think let's see here
Sorry, I'm getting lost in my control panels again. There we go. Okay, so that was our friend Joe. Okay, so well, I think we're out of time, folks. I'm sorry that uh, Natan, Natan, I don't think we have time. Uh, Jesse McDougal says I, he read Internet Riches eight years ago when he first started in the internet economy. That's uh, this one, Internet Riches. That's in many languages around the world now. So great to meet you, Jesse. Um, I hope that was helpful to you. I'm, I'm starting to write another book, so look out. We'll see. Um, takes a long time. Uh, but I hope that was helpful to uh, a lot of you. And uh, Yvonne, we were going to get to uh, lifetime value and uh, customer acquisition costs. And I think Sam had a question about Delaware C Corps too. But the time is up. I don't want to keep everybody all day. We've all got things to do, including me. But most of all, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, don't forget about our friends in the Ukraine. At the top of the show, I mentioned that this charity that looks like a pretty good one. Uh, and in the future, let me put that up again. Um, friends in the Ukraine are getting pounded. There it is. Media Lifeline Ukraine. Uh, and if that's uh, you're in a position to do so, please do help them. And uh, that's a charity that I found that supports journalists uh, getting the word out about the uh, really bad situation that's happening there. Um, YouTube, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, go, you're welcome to come find me on LinkedIn and say hello. Um, please do tell me where you're from because I get so many uh, inquiries. I don't do real good messaging or follow up there, but I'd be happy to hear from you and connect. Most of all, you want to get on our email list so that you can hear about stuff like this in the future, which is this button. Yes, that button, startupeventnews.com. Uh, and that will get you on the Startup Council's mailing list because every month we do these Startup Accelerator workshops, which are great fun. They're just like this, except you all can see each other. They're more of a Zoom thing and, and talk to each other uh, and help each other. And I'm there just to moderate, not doing all the talking like I have been today. Um, happy to help uh, you through that way or anywhere else. If you see me or the Startup Council out on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, please do like and share and subscribe and follow and whatever the latest nonsense is. Uh, we'd appreciate it because that helps me help more people. Um, I think that's it. All right. So thanks for an hour of your time. I hope you go out there, do great things. And if we can be of helpful, can be helpful to you, uh, let us know how and leave some comments on YouTube or whatever or on LinkedIn and uh, we'll do our best to follow up. Thanks for joining me. Good luck. Uh, go get them. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.